New Scientist, a pop science and pseudoscience website, decided to make this atrocity. Unless you're way into things like auras, there's kind of only two ways to think about what reality really is. The first view says reality is everything that would still be here if there was no one around to experience it. No, no one thinks that. You narrowed it down to just two views of reality and still managed to pick one that no one believes. Reality can't just be everything except people, because people fucking exist too. But we can continue down this path if we think of particles as fluctuations that occupy a bit of space for a bit of time. In other words, the particles aren't really what's fundamental. It's the space-time they sit in. And what is space-time? It's a set of coordinates. Three for space, one for time. And coordinates are just a way to talk about numbers. So by this line of reasoning, the most fundamental thing that exists, and that forms the basis for everything else, is math. I know I've said this in multiple videos, but I have to say it again. Numbers don't take up space. Those numbers alone don't provide any information. For them to be of any use, you have to understand that they represent an axis and a certain distance in space from the origin. Distance in space is not a property of numbers. The number 7 is not actually a certain distance in space from 8. And whatever unit of distance we decide to use is arbitrary. We just make it up. So you didn't show how space reduces to numbers. You showed that we can come up with an arbitrary system to label locations in space. We didn't come up with these by traveling around and literally seeing numbers and then marking their locations on a map. If math is really the ultimate reality, then how would you explain something really complicated, like consciousness? You might start by saying consciousness is what human brains do. And to understand brains, you have to look at neurons, which are cells and behave according to the laws of biology. But biology is just complicated chemistry, and chemistry is just complicated physics, which, as we saw, is ultimately math. No, physics is not math. If it was, a mathematician and a physicist would be the same fucking thing, and you'd be able to discover everything about physics by sitting in a room and thinking about math for long enough. But we just said that math is a set of ideas that exist only in our minds. So that means, somehow, we're back where we started. To explain consciousness, we had to rely on consciousness. That may seem crazy, but it's not the craziest part. It turns out we can construct all of mathematics from the concept of an empty set, better known as nothing. That means that if math really is whatever is most fundamental in the universe, then reality is ultimately based on nothing. Which is to say that nothing is what is real. Holy fuck. Nothing is what is real? What the fuck have you been smoking? This is how fucking insane science hipsters are. I now have to refute the claim that nothing is what is real. I spent more time wondering how you could actually say that than I spent thinking about what is wrong with it. Did it just not occur to you that if nothing is real, you wouldn't be around to make this piece of shit video? And if you're trying to reify nothing and say that nothing is actually something, then that would just be a contradiction. Now of course, contradictions don't matter at all to science hipsters, but to people who aren't insane they're generally considered to be a problem. 